Hi everyone and welcome back to the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. It's Christine here and I am back with part three of my six and a half by eight and a half mini album using the Graphic 45 A Proper Gentleman collection. This has been such a fun album to put together. Uh, in part three we are going to be decorating the album. Now because as I said in part two the pages are a bit repetitive in this album. Um, this is a great album for beginners especially. If you've never made a mini, mini album before, this would be a great one to start with because it's very simple in terms of the page construction. But just like I did in part, in the part two video, we constructed the pages. In that video, I just did two with you, two of the pages, um, four pages total, two of the base pocket pages live with you on camera. And I'm going to do the same thing with the decorating because, again, it's so repetitive. All the measurements are the same except for um, some of the customized flaps for the cut aparts in this collection, which aren't standard sizes, which again, we talked about back in video number two. So I'm only gonna decorate two of the base pocket pages. So that'll be four pages total, plus the inside front cover with you guys on camera, because again, everything, the other pages will just be done the same exact way. All right, so let me first go ahead and show you where I placed my magnets. And as you can see, I have the back two pages and the inside back cover already done alrighty and so you'll be able to see all of that during the walkthrough um, but on each page the magnets were placed in the same place so let me just go ahead and show you how I did that let me first show you the magnets that I used they're um, hiding here they are uh, I use these magnetic discs. They're the small size from Scrap and Create. Basic Gray makes these, and these are my favorite. And I accidentally, I just got to attaching magnets, and I meant to leave <laughs> to leave one to do live with you on camera just to show you how to do it. And I completely just was going along and forgot. But I've, I've shown you in other videos before, and it's really, really easy. When you open the packaging, um, the back of each magnet has a sticker on it. So they're self-adhesive, and so half of them have a plus sign and half of them have a minus sign on their uh, stickers so you know if it's positive and negative and the positive and the negative of course attached together and so you just very easily um, can can attach your magnets that way and then I like to put a piece of score tape on top of them which I will remove before I place my design paper down just to keep that magnet just extra adhesive to keep that magnet firmly in place so on the inside front and back covers, we have little standardized um, uh, flaps. By standardized, I simply mean they're the size that they are because that's what the cut apart measured in the paper collection. This particular paper collection did not have standard cut aparts. Um, and by standard, I mean, you know, our standard three by four sizes are four by six. There's this sheet here with lots of different sizes. And then I used a couple of the cars as well for little flaps, just because I thought it would be fun to kind of, you know, add some interaction to the book. So anyway, and anytime there's a flap, I did use a magnet just to keep the flaps tightly in place on pages one, three, six, uh, five, and seven. Um, again, they're all the same. The main components are all the same. So here's our right flap, and I put a little magnet down here at the bottom of the right flap, and then it's, it's match right here on top of the left flap. And then I did the same thing for the left flap. I either put it in the bottom left corner or the uh, the middle, depending on what I what size flap I had going on on the base page. So that helps keep these two um, flaps in place. Okay, remember this right flap is where we have that eighth of an inch gusset. So when you hold this up like so and kind of turn the book this way, you can really see how that eighth of an inch gusset works. All right, so I can see there that the extra space that you're given by just that little bit of an eighth of an inch gusset there on the pages. All right, so there's the two main magnets on this page, uh, four, I'm sorry, two sets here and then here. And then if you add any of the little customized flaps, I added magnets to those as well. But again, those are entirely optional. On page two, which is going to be the same as pages two, four, six, and eight. Okay, all of these have the main, same main elements on them. I have a left flap here, and I just have a magnet at the bottom that attaches to the pocket of the base page. So that is the main element, and then of course this pocket on the front, but we don't need a magnet there. So um, for just the basic base page, you would only need one pair of magnets for that second page. 
If you add any flaps, you might want to add magnets to those, but that's certainly optional. So again, just, just to go over it one more time, same idea, magnet here for this right flap, right here and right here. And then for the left flap, this time I put it up top because I didn't have a flap up here and I did add a little flap down here. But again, all of these little flaps are optional. So just for the basic pages, you only need four sets of magnets for the, um, the top page and one set for the, the under the second page of each base page, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now remember, the, the pocket pages on this album come out of the top, all right? We have these, um, these uh, pocket pages here that, and, they, and you, so you can stick large tags uh, and they will come out of the top this time as opposed to the side. And I wanted to, sometimes I forget to give the measurements for that. So this is what the tag is gonna look like. As you can see, it's very large, okay? The black cardstock, um, which is the base of the tag is uh, five and a quarter by I believe seven and a half. Let me just check here seven and three quarters So five and a quarter by seven and three quarters now I uh, Have a lot of scraps left over but nothing big enough to cover this entire tag Because like I said, I just used one DCE for this project if you wanted your tags to have lots of design paper You may want to go ahead and purchase two DCEs of this collection I personally most of the time just like my tags to be playing with some type of cardstock on them and this time I just chose a cream because there's a lot of browns as you can see in this paper um, so I thought the cream would look really good and I just inked around the corner of the edges a little bit I did add a little charm to the top of the tag and some ribbon um, and so you'll see all four of the tags in the final walkthrough but I did just want to share the size with you if you want to put the cream mat on you can do so that's just a quarter of an inch smaller so it's um, five by seven and a half um, but again you don't have to add that cream cardstock if you don't want to you could just stick a large photo there I decided to add the cream cardstock because I might put several small photos here and then journal on the back or something like that so that's why I tend to add my cream cardstock to my photo mats because I'm never quite sure um, because I don't print my pictures out first usually so I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna lay everything out in terms of the pictures so I will often put that cream piece of cardstock it's a very lightweight from recollections brand from Michaels and it doesn't really add much bulk to the book so I just put it there so I have a nice journaling space if I care to use it for that or I can just place a photo right on top of it and there's no harm no foul if you wanted to of course and you decide you have a photo big enough for this space but you've already put down this cream colored mat you can just get uh, undo and take it right off and then put your photo down if you prefer to not waste the bulk with the with the cream mat but to me it's really not a big deal it doesn't really add that much bulk to, to, for me, for my purposes. I did round the corners, by the way, of both uh, the cream cardstock and the black. And I just used a simple corner rounder punch for that. There's several on the market. Mine's actually just an old one from probably 12 years ago from Creative Memories. But they're all over the craft stores, so you shouldn't have a problem finding those if you'd like to replicate that design. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with page one. All right, and I've already pre-cut all of my design paper and pre-planned where, where all the paper is going to go. And I've also already pre-inked uh, the edges of my papers, which were, won't probably won't really show up on camera because the point for me of inking is just to kind of get rid of when you cut the Graphic 45 paper, there's sort of a white color on the edge after you cut it with your, uh, uh, with your, um, paper trimmer. Um, so I like to just kind of cover that up. So you really don't see a lot of the inking that I do. You can see a little bit of it on this cream colored cardstock or some of the lighter colored pages. It'll show up a little bit, but probably not even on camera. But I just think in person it gives it a nice finished look and it gets rid of that white inner core of the paper after you cut it. So to do my inking, I use this powder puff. I got this from Scrap and Create. I use the Java color most of the time. There are other colors. There's a darker brown as well but i find java works great for me and it's so super easy let me just grab a scrap of paper here that i have left over from this project and i'll show you what i mean all you do is you just take the lid off and then you just ink you just hold the paper in one hand and the little 
um, uh, ink tray in the other and that easily I have inked all four corners and I can see it in person just very lightly you probably can't see it on the video at all but in person it does just give a nice finished look so I definitely recommend inking your corners if you have the time to do so I just think it makes it look nice and finished in the end and I do recommend this powder puff it is fantastic and it makes inking so easy I have done let me count here one two three four five this is the sixth album i've done with this one ink pad and it still hasn't it hasn't even come close to drying up on me or anything so definitely recommend that okay let's go ahead and get started the main adhesive that i'm going actually the only adhesive that i'm going to be using i believe for this um video and adhering the uh, design paper is my art glitter glue. You can use regular HEG adhesive if you prefer. I just love the art glitter glue. I find that it holds up over time. Nothing slips. It holds everything down perfectly for me. Um, and I get some wiggle room if I don't set it down straight right away, which is a good thing with um, one of the perks of working with a glue. And I am not great at setting things down straight on the first try a lot of the time. So I find the glue to be a savior for me because it gives me that extra little bit of time I can pick it up again and fix it. So I'm going to bring my papers over now for page number one. All right. And like I said, I've pre-cut everything. So this should go relatively quickly. So remember, we have this right flap with this little uh, punch that I did here. And I used, if you recall, in video number two, I showed you how I made that uh, cut on the, whoops, on the flap with my envelope punch board. I just simply put the paper in the punch board and punched down at four inches. This, this, the, the length of this is eight inches, so I punched right in the middle at four. On the design paper, I figured out the orientation and then I put it into the, uh, the envelope punch board and I just punched it an eighth of an inch shorter than the actual cardstock. So this was punched at three and seven eighths and it, I find it lines up really nicely. Alrighty, so that's how I did that in case you want to replicate that. But again, as I said in video number two, you can absolutely leave that out. You can leave it straight. You could use a little circle punch instead. Um, you can do whatever you'd like to do. So I'm going to go ahead now and start adhering my papers. So I'm going to grab my art glitter glue and we'll just get started here. This is the signature sheet um, of the collection. And I decided instead of making it my cover of my album this time around, I'm gonna do a little bit something a little bit different on my cover. And I should have mentioned this before I got started. So let me kind of back up for a minute as I am pushing this down here and getting this nice and burnished down. Um, one thing I always recommend doing when you first get your paper collection, go ahead and pull out whatever, however many cut apart pages you want. This collection, I pulled out one of these, this sheet here with all of these different sized cut aparts and one of the cars because I wanted to use them for a few flaps throughout the book. I also decide roughly, not exactly, but roughly how I want to decorate my covers and my spine so I can pull those papers out of the pack and I don't accidentally cut into them as I'm working on my book. So I set them completely aside. So I have done that and I have placed my covers in a separate spot. And I, instead of having a signature page like I often do on my cover this time, I just have some plain design paper here. Um, that I'm going to be using for my cover because I am in love with this image here from the chipboard elements. So I'm going to center my cover around this image here from the chipboard pieces that comes with the DCE. So, and in the walkthrough, you'll fit, you'll see how I kind of ended up doing my, my cover. Um, my covers generally go through lots of different phases before they're finished. So I don't tend to film <laughs> my, um, construction of my covers just because, you know, I never quite know what I'm doing till it's done. So it'd be kind of confusing to film that, but I will give you all the measurements of, um, all of the design paper that is used throughout the album. That'll be in the description box of this video below. So you will be able to see the sizes that I use for the cover spine and back cover as well. Um, but I did pull out this little um, brown and tan dotted paper for my cover, this uh, striped paper for my spine, and then this kind of gentleman's hat and umbrella paper for the back. 
Um, I was going back and forth about backing it with red cardstock. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to back it with a dark brown colored cardstock from my stash instead. But other than that, those are the papers that I'm going to be using for my outside of my book. So let's get back to decorating the inside now. So we want to move to the inside of that right flap, which again has this um, little uh, groove in it. So I did that the same way as I just explained and made a little groove in the um, design paper as well. So what I'm gonna do is I always dry fit first just to make, dry fitting just simply means I'm placing it on the page just to make sure I cut it properly and it looks good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, score tape backing for these magnets that I placed here. Remember, you don't need to add the flaps if you don't want to. So you don't need as many magnets as I have that that's just depending on how you choose to decorate your book in terms of the flaps. So you definitely don't need all of these magnets. I think I used almost two full packs of the basic gray magnets for this album. But again, that's only because I went a little crazy with the flaps because I really wanted some interaction. Um, and I just thought that they were kind of a fun little addition to the album. So that's kind of why I, why I did it that way. Okay, so I've got this nice and glued down. Now on the backs of all of my flaps, I'm just going to use the same cream cardstock that I'm using for my big tags that go in the top of the pockets. So I will do that off camera so as not to bore you and we'll just go ahead and close those for now. But on the back of all of my small tags, in the final walkthrough you'll see there will be just cream colored cardstock. And that way you can either do some journaling about the photos that you have on the page or you can actually put a small picture. Um, up to you. Okay, so now I have these two little cars that I want to add to my little um, flaps here. And let's see. Let me. There we go. Okay, so it looks like I actually, this is why I dry fit first because look, I didn't cut the <laughs> this tag properly. So let me measure this really quick and I will fix this super quick, but that's a good reason to, <laughs> one, two, three, four, three and five eighths. Okay, that's a good reason to uh, dry fit first because you never know what any mistakes she might have made. So three and five eighths, we wanna go three and four eighths, just like that. You know what, I'm just gonna um, take a little bit off of each end, I think. <clears throat> And I'll do the same thing to this one. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off of that and then I'll measure on the other side. So we want three and three eighths, which would be a quarter of an inch smaller, just to give us that black outline of the cardstock. Now, since I cut those and I had already pre-inked, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the little powder pack back over and just re-ink those new edges that I made now. Not re-ink them, ink them. Um, since they were not inked before because I cut it wrong. Okay, there we go. So now let's make sure that these fit, that I did my measuring correct this time around, and they do, see? Okay, so these are just, whoops, if I can not drop things on the floor. These will just go right here like so. So just grab your art glitter glue and go ahead and get these glued down. And again, these, I can't say it enough, these flaps are entirely optional. Um, I tend to go a little crazy with the interaction sometimes because I really just enjoy that as part of the mini album making process as well as just flipping through it. I just think it adds some fun, but it's absolutely optional. You do not have to do what I did. Absolutely not. This is, this is this, the piece that I chose for this flap here. And by the way, all the sizes of all the design paper, like I said, will be in the description box below. But as a rule of thumb, I just do a quarter of an inch smaller than where I'm placing the paper. So remember this flap here was uh, four and three quarters by eight. So my design paper is four and a half by seven and three quarters. That gives me a nice eighth of an inch border of black cardstock around all four sides of my design paper, and I like that. Some people do a sixteenth of an inch, so you would cut it just a little bit uh, smaller than I did. But that is entirely just a personal preference choice. You do not have to follow my measurements. You can cut it whatever size you like, of course. Um, 
but that's just what I do. Okay, so this piece is gonna go here. This is one, this is a really fun, um, I loved this paper from the collection. It's kind of old newsprint paper, and I just thought it was really, really cool. So I kind of left it alone, and I'm probably gonna put a little chipboard piece or something like that on the bottom of this particular piece so I don't have to permanently cover up this paper. You guys know if you've watched any of my other tutorials that I really like my albums to serve two functions. One, to of course hold photos and memories, but two, to display some of this gorgeous paper that we spend so much money you know, on and so much time hoarding, or at least I do. I don't know about you guys, but I sure do that. So. I like to try when I can to leave places to just enjoy the paper. For example, in my album, I'm leaving this completely alone. I might add a few embellishments to it, but I will not be covering this page up with photos. Why? Because I think that paper is absolutely exquisite. It's fun to look at, and I've got so much other places for photos throughout this album. Um, and then when I have flaps like this, as you'll see throughout the book, sometimes I put plain cardstock on there so I can just, you know, glue photos right on. Other times I'll put more decorative um, or, you know, symbolic card, uh, design paper on there and then I'll just add you know like a little chipboard piece or something to the bottom and only glue it on a few sides so I can just slip my photos out and still view the beautiful paper so hopefully that makes sense but that's kind of what I keep in mind when I'm doing my decorating uh, now this piece here you don't have to go all the way to the bottom because I have this pocket here so this is just gonna be five and three quarters by about six okay um, and this is a continuation of this newsprint here which I thought was kind of fun you know just to continue it across the top so let's go ahead and whoops let's go ahead and remove the backing over our magnets first and then I'll go ahead and stick this paper down there we go all right so grab our art glitter glue just think this paper is fantastic and it was definitely a challenge for me. You guys know from my past tutorials, I, I think, if you've seen any of them, that I am definitely kind of girly when it comes to, you know, my decorations. I like to add lots of ribbon. I like to add lots of charms. I like to add bows and really girly colors and things. And so it was really fun for me to work with a more masculine um, paper collection. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was definitely a challenge, but a fun one. So I chose this blue plaid for the pocket. And as you saw there, um, I just simply slid this design paper into the pocket. So, but again, you don't have to go all the way down. Okay, just a little bit of the waist down to the pocket, but that gives us nice coverage so we don't have a gap um, between the back page and the pocket. We have full design paper. And then I'm just going to simply line this up with the um, design paper above it, right on top of that pocket there. So now it's just a nice seamed transition from this paper to this paper. And I chose this blue here because there's this beautiful blue color over here in this red um, design paper. And then I have this little flap here, which is for another little car. This one I did cut properly, yay. So let's go ahead and get this one on. Again, totally optional, or you could change it out and use some of the cut aparts that I use in different places. Um, you know, just change the sizes. This is your book, so you do it however you would like to do it. So this is what page one is going to look like. Let's go ahead and close it up and then kind of just show. So here's the front page. Here's the back page of that right flap with some fun little flaps. Remember, these will the backs of these will be covered with just some cream colored cardstock. Here's your left flap inside front and back, and then here is your um, pocket page there. And then don't forget you have your nice big flap. I'm sorry, big uh, photo mat rather that goes right into this. Uh, let me find it right into this particular um, pocket just like that and that's so that's how that's gonna look but I'm gonna take this out for now because it's a little easier to work with it okay let's come now to the back of page one which is page two and remember pages two four six and eight are generally the same again but for some different flap sizes because I did use the cut aparts 
Now for, for pages two, four, six, and eight, I'm going to be using Graphic 45 regular size black tags for the pockets here. They fit perfectly in this pocket that we made for the front of this left flap. They fit perfectly and I'm going to be using, and I won't bore you by doing this on camera, um, but I'm going to be using, it's upside down in the packaging, but I'm going to be using the regular tag die from Graphic 45. And what that will do is it will cut design paper perfectly that fits right inside the tag, giving you a nice black border. Um, but I'm going to be using some cardstock and some scraps that I have to decorate my tags. All you do is just run this through your Big Shot or whatever uh, die cut machine you have. And, um, and that just is a fun little extra to add. It adds some um, some uh, action to your to your to your album. It lets people pull things out. You can do journaling on the tags. You can add photos, whatever you want. So in the final walkthrough, you'll see how I decorated those. But I just used four total, and you get nine in one package. So you'll have plenty left over. All right. So let's go ahead and just decorate page two. All right, let's put these paper clips away. So we'll start with the front of the left flap. And that, I chose this paper here. This is sort of like a, um, almost looks like antique buttons or something. I just love it. It's the back of the clock paper. So I chose this. Remember, you don't have to go all the way down the flap when you have a pocket. So this flap measures four and three quarters by eight. So this paper, this design paper is four and a half by about six. It doesn't, you know, however far down you want to go, you certainly don't have to go all the way down. Just, you're just wasting your paper if you do it, but you want to go, you know, a little bit below the top of the pocket. That's all you want to make sure that you do. I then chose this paper for the, um, the cover of the little pocket itself. It's more of that fun uh, old time newsprint paper that I love so much. And I had this little scrap left after doing page one and I thought, hey, that's perfect for my pocket on page two. So we'll just line that up here on top of this pocket. And then, like I said, I'll have a tag. You can also fit other photo mats beyond the tag in this pocket as well. It's a very generous pocket. Okay, so let's open this now. And we have the back of our left flap. This one does need to go all the way to the, to the bottom because we don't have a flap, I mean a pocket rather, on this paper. So this measures uh, four and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Again, you're just cutting it quarter of an inch smaller. I'm just dry fitting to make sure I cut it correctly, and I did. So let's go ahead and put some glitter glue on the back. By the way, there is no glitter in the glue. That's just the name of it. <laughs> um, so you don't have to worry about glittering your projects if you don't want glitter because there is no glitter in it at all. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure I'm on camera here. And we'll go ahead and simply adhere this, just center it nicely so you have a nice little border of cardstock behind your design paper. And there we go. All right, now we have this little, this was optional flap that I added for this particular cut apart. So again, you could switch them up, put different cut aparts different places, not use the cut aparts at all. Just use them in your pockets, um, which is a very popular way. Lots of people just put them on photo mats and just stick them in the pockets and that would alleviate the trouble of having to create any of these flaps at all. That's certainly an option as well. So you do whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you think looks nice. I'm just giving you some ideas here, but in no me in no way do you have to follow what I do to the letter. I am not an expert in mini album making at all. Um, this is just a hobby for me that I love to do, and I've been doing it for a very long time. But you know, I just I've taught myself, and I don't uh, claim to be an expert in any way. But hopefully, you like my designs, and I hopefully I'm giving you some ideas, and most importantly, showing off this awesome paper and products that you can get at Scrap and Create. See, I laid that on crooked. That's why I like glue, because I can pick it back up before it's fully uh, cemented to the cardstock, if you will, and try again. 
So um, that, is, that is one of the benefits to using glue for sure. So I get a little bit of wiggle room. But on the same token, once it is adhered and has stuck to that card stock, it's not going anywhere, which is what I love about the art glitter glue. Okay, so this flap opens like this. And now I have this little uh, piece that's gonna go inside the pocket. Okay, and uh, the side's coming up. Let me just add a little bit of glue there, okay. If, by the way, you get any glue outside of where you mean to get it, it's not a big deal at all. This glue dries clear. So um, you don't have to worry about that. So for what I'm going to do for the base page itself is I am going to... Boy, I put that glue on sloppy just then, didn't I? Good thing it dries clear. <laughs> okay, so you just slide it right down into the pocket, just like you were inserting a photo mat or something. You just slide it down. Get it nice and lined up with your uh, design paper on the left here so you have like a nice little transition from each from the flap to the page and then go ahead and you know burnish it down you can even use your bone folder that'll help sometimes sometimes i also notice that when i'm putting glue on the back of something sometimes i don't always get it right into the corner where i need it because maybe that's where my fingers were holding the paper or whatever the case may be so um you know you can always go back and check your edges make sure you have enough glue down and that the paper is completely stuck down to the card stock underneath it. Of course, you can also just use regular ATG and do the same thing with that um, if you prefer not using glue. A lot of people don't like to use glue and that's totally fine. It's completely your preference, what you want to use. All right, so now I'm gonna do the pocket cover, which uh, just is, is six and, um, I'm sorry, is four five and three quarters by three. Again, all those measurements will be below. All right, so this is what page two looks like, this this particular page two. Um, so we've got this with our pocket and then this flap here and then I added these two fun little flips and then here's this nice generous pocket on the pocket page itself, okay? So it is that easy, guys, it is super simple. Now we're on page three. So let's grab the elements that I cut pre-cut for page three. And again, all these measurements except for the little customized flaps will be the same as page one, okay? So again, I just loved this paper of the New York Stock Exchange. It look, kind of looks like architectural blueprints to me. So I cut it in such a way that you could see the columns and you could see it says, starts to say New York up here and then down here it says Stock Exchange. And I just thought it was really cool. So for me, for me personally, this would not be paper that I would cover with photos. I might add a few embellishments to it as I'm finishing up the book, but I'm gonna basically leave this alone for the most part because I like, like I said, I really like to um, enjoy the beautiful paper as well as have places for my photos and my journaling. So this would be one of those places where I definitely would want to keep this um, beautiful paper where I can see it and not completely cover it up. All right, so there's that. I thought that was really cool looking. So this opens like this, and now we have the back of the right flap to do. I just chose this green plaid. I love this paper. And this is the back of the cut-aparts paper. So I don't have much of this paper because I used one full sheet of all the cut-aparts that I have used throughout the album. So um, I only have this plaid paper in a few spots, but I really like it. And of course, if you chose not to use the cut aparts, you could use more of the plaid paper if you wanted, or you could buy two DCEs and then you wouldn't have to worry about it at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue the back of this, and then we'll just center this on the back of this right flap here. Am I on frame? Yeah, I think so, okay, here we go. So all I'm doing is I'm just lining this paper up, just nice and centered on the cardstock as best that you can and then go ahead and burnish it down. You can use your bone folder if that helps you. And then um, I always, like I said, I check my edges just to make sure I have added enough glue. Cause sometimes, you know, if I'm holding the paper in that particular corner, I might not get glue, enough glue on it. So I always wanna make sure, go back and double check that. 
Okay, this is an optional customizable flat, one of the cut aparts. Again, these are all wonky sizes um, because the cut aparts in this collection are not standard sizes. So they're just all different sizes um, and that's fine. I have no problem with that at all. I think it adds some character to the book. Um, but I will have all the sizes uh, in the description box below. But again, they're just what the size is once you cut the cut, the cut aparts apart. There's no real secret to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, I'm trying to think how I did this. Yeah, this is gonna go on the outside, some more of that green plaid. So this is gonna go on the outside of that left flap here. So let's just add some, again, you can see more of the cut aparts on the back here. And like I said, I used all of the cut aparts for this album because I just thought they were fun. And I just love that added interaction. And I find that when I give mini albums as gifts, people really love the interaction part. Um, they love flipping through it and lifting up things. And you know, some of my other albums have way more flips and flaps than this even. This is a very simple one, but still I think someone would enjoy getting, getting this. I hope, anyway. All right, the back of this left flap, I decided to use this paper here love this paper um, this particular design so let's go ahead and get this glued up and then we will whoops we have a little bit of the score tape sticking up so i'm just going to tear a little bit i just put my score tape a little too long on the magnet so let me just tear some of that off so it's not sticking out of the top grab my scissors and cut that okay there we go all right so now let's try this again here I'm probably gonna have to add some more glue because it does dry pretty fast um, yeah I'm gonna add more glue really quickly there There we go. Okay, nice and straight on the flap. And then I chose this little guy to go there on that little flap. Again, totally optional. So I'm just gonna stick this right here, nice and centered on that flap. And then we have our base page and pocket. And what I did is there are two different sheets that are different. Um, of that newspaper print. So what I did is I just cut it so when we put these together it's gonna look so cool. I'll show you what I mean when I get it together. Um, just an idea, you know, certainly you can use different papers in different ways, but this was just an idea that I had and I liked how it came out because it looks like the paper just continues down the full page. So I'm just gonna slide the base page uh, design paper into the pocket which remember, I've cut it shorter than the actual page because I have the pocket there. So it's five and three quarters by about six. So there's the top. And then if you look here, see how I cut it, it looks like it just continues on from the top to the bottom. I love that. Love that. And, and because I love this paper. So this isn't a place where you know, when you have pockets, you're just going to have photo mats in there. So you can remove the photo mats and still you have nothing permanently attached to the top of this paper. So you can, um, you know, look at it. <laughs> and I think that that's really cool. Now I have mine. Let's see if I can. It's a little bit wonky. Let me just pick this up. See, another reason I love glue. And yeah, I need it to be about there. Yeah, like that. Okay. Just didn't have it quite centered. So let's go ahead and try this again. There we go. Okay. I'll go ahead and push that down. And now we have a nice place where we can place our photo mats, as you can see. And then when you remove it, ta-da, you have this really cool little um, old-timey newsprint that I think is so cool. So this is page three. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the fun New York Times stock exchange. Open, fun little flip, open, fun little flip in your pocket. Okay? And then finally, page four, which again will be the same generally as page two, except for a few of those customizable um, flaps. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the outside of the left flap, and we're going to do the base of it first, and then we'll do the pocket. So I chose this paper for the base of the pocket page. I mean, of the flap, rather, excuse me. So this goes like so. And when I'm planning pages, I like to plan um, when two are going to be facing each other. I plan those out uh, purposefully ahead of time, so they kind of you know, they kind of go together. Like there's blue here, there's blue in here. Um, here we've got some red. So I try to try to keep that in mind. I don't always succeed, but it, it, but it always turns out okay because what's great about a lot of these wonderful paper companies that we love, like Graphic 45, is really all of the papers are meant to kind of mesh together. So, you know, if you haven't perfectly planned it out, 99% of the time the papers are going to go beautifully together anyway. So... You don't have to worry too much about that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over now. And I have this back of this left flap and I chose this paper here. So let's go ahead and remove the backing of the score tape. Get that stuff off. And then here we go. This is the signature sheet, as you can see. So this is the other side of the signature sheet, which like I said, I usually put on my covers, but this time I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So we'll see. Hopefully you like how that turns out when you see the walkthrough. Now I have this fun little car flap. Again, totally optional that I have added to this left flap. So I'll go ahead and glue that in. I chose a blue car on purpose because it goes with the blue in this paper and also what I have planned for um, the base page, which is this paper here. And this can look a little bit pattern heavy, but don't forget you're going to be adding photos to a lot of these pages. This paper, for example, is absolutely lovely, but it's a little bit easier to cover some of this paper up than it is, you know, like this gorgeous paper or the signature sheet or something like that. So pictures will help break up some of the patterning of these papers. So it'll look less busy when you're completely finished with your album. I don't think it looks too busy now, but some might. And I just want to remind you, don't forget, but once you add photos, you know, it's going to, it's going to change it up a little bit and it's not going to look quite as pattern heavy. I then have this little piece here, and this comes from the um, same paper as this. It actually comes from like down further on the paper. So it's more of that old timey newsprint that it has boots on it and the prices of boots, and I loved it. So it's going on this pocket right here. So let me, whoops, go ahead and tear off this score tape backing for our magnet, and then we'll get this glued down. Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and get this down. There we go. And then finally, I have one more car little flap, entirely optional, that I have added up here. And I thought this car matched the red, and it also matches that tan color from this paper here. So see, it kind of all goes together. At least I try to have a little bit of a plan. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, and it's still going to look great. All right, so this is page four. Flap here. Remember, we're going to put a tag in this pocket, as well as you can fit other photo mats as well. So this opens, and then we have these two little fun optional flaps, and then you have your pocket here. Okay, and so that is page four. I will quickly show you the other two pages that I did, two base pages that I did. So this is page five. So I have this fun newsprint here, and this is the continuation of it. This is like the other side of this newsprint, which I thought was kind of cool to do it that way. And then this opens, and we have these two little flips, totally optional. 
and then this pocket page here. Again, this looks kind of busy, but don't forget you're going to have, you know, photo mats that break up that pattern a little bit, okay? And then this is the back. This is page six. We have this fun, cute little flap here of a, a jockey on his racehorse. This beautiful paper here, which is so sophisticated. And then this opens up like this. We have a large photo mat uh, or uh, cut apart here. You can put a large photo mat on the back. This more of this gorgeous paper. And then this little flap here. And then I paper pieced this proper gentleman on top of this uh, pattern paper here. And here's your pocket. Okay. And then finally, page seven. This is gorgeous, so I'll probably leave this alone with maybe a few embellishments on the side. Uh, maybe some metal embellishments or something. Then you open it up. Here's more of the clock paper. Open that up. And we just have a beautiful spread here for photos. Okay. And then finally, page seven. I'm sorry, page eight, where we have this little flap, pocket, open, and then nice spread for photos here. And then this is the back of the inst of the ins uh, the inside of the back cover. Okay, I think I got that. St I stated that right that time, which I just it was very simply decorated. And we're gonna do the same thing now to the front cover. Slightly different size flap because again, these cut aparts are all different sizes, but um, you get the idea. So. Um, it's just the size is just simply based on the size of the little paper when I cut it out. <laughs> so this flap is going to go right here. Okay, so we'll stick this down. Just centered right there on that flap. I forgot to trim my base page here. So let me just trim it. You only need to go to about six and a half on this. So let me just trim that really quick because I forgot to. And I'm not going to um, ink this edge here because it's going to be down in the pocket. So I can save myself some ink that way. Go ahead and add lots of glue to the back of this. Lift this flap up, remove this score tape, which I probably should have done first. And then go ahead and you just simply, oops, I forgot to trim the sides as well, didn't I? Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay, I can fix that. So it's six inches wide about six and a half inches long and I'm just going to use my old paper trimmer that I don't care if it gets a little gunked up with glue and let me just measure that one more time measure twice cut once right so we want this six inches like so okay all right and that is why I recommend keeping old paper trimmers because if you make mistakes like I do, and I make them all the time, it helps to have a trimmer that you don't care if it gets a little glue on it. Otherwise, I would have had to wait for this to dry, which isn't that big a deal because like I've said, this art glitter glue dries pretty quickly, but it just saves me having to wait. <laughs> okay, so this is just going to go right inside here of this front cover and see how I went ahead and put it into the pocket. Got a little glue on the cardstock there, but it will dry clear. And then this simply goes and covers the pocket itself. So we'll go ahead and put some glue on this and then stick it down. Okay, and that is our entire inside of our book. Pretty much done. I will, of course, come back for the walkthrough and show you the album completed. I'll probably uh, put some strips of some coordinating cards, uh, a coordinating uh, design paper rather, in between the hinges. And um, obviously, I will be adding all of the photo mats and tags that go in the top pockets. And we'll be adding some cream cardstock to the back of the flaps. But other than that, it's pretty much done except for some embellishing, which is the really fun part, I think. So that's it, guys. I will come back and show you the walkthrough. Um, I'm planning my cover, so it's going to look something like this. I'm not going to use the red cardstock anymore behind it. I'm probably going to use a dark brown if I use anything. Right now, I've just cut the pieces larger than they need to be because I wanted to make sure I had, you know, enough for when I got ready to, to do the covers. Um, so this is what I've got so far. It's going to be a very simple album and cover and I'll have you know something fun centering around this piece 
on the cover. So you will be able to see all of that in the final walkthrough. All right, guys, I can't thank you enough for crafting with me today. I hope that you are enjoying this simple, fun, masculine album which is something very different from me, and I hope that you guys are enjoying it. I am sure having fun making it and sharing it with you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.